Phil is incredibly talented musically, and well, he's also a bit of an odd duck in a great way, but there's a whole lot we can learn from the unique perspective that he brings. This represents his perspective, which can not only help you gel with other musicians better, but also avoid the pitfalls that many of us have when playing in bands that can actually ruin the experience for us. So let's take a look at what I believe is the most important thing any guitarist can learn from Phil Lesh. It doesn't really matter what instrument you play, we can all learn from Phil's wisdom. So let's hear the man himself talk about how he got his start in music and eventually teamed up with Jerry Garcia. I picked up the violin when I was eight in third grade and, and uh, started taking lessons and I led, later I played in the youth orchestras and stuff like that. Then I switched to trumpet, played, started playing jazz, um, uh, studied composition, composed music, and, uh, and then uh, I got an invitation to join a band. I'd known Jerry Garcia for a long time, five years before before he uh, invited me to join the band. But I'd always wanted to play with him. But we didn't play the same kind of music. He was playing bluegrass and folk music, and I was playing jazz and classical. And uh, so it was it was a kind of never the twain shall meet. One thing I've always noticed when listening to Phil's playing is how individualistic he is, and therefore he sounds like nobody else. You know, you can hear him adding his jazz influence in a tune like China Cat Sunflower. Like all musicians, Phil has not created sound in a vacuum. He's been influenced by others, everyone he's played with, and in particular, a few musicians who have really helped him shape his own individual sound. There's, you know, there's always influences that that, that come up, but it's, it's for me, it was rarely rock and roll bands. Uh, it would be individual musicians or some 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 drummer that plays a certain way. You know, wow, I really dig that. And so I would play, as, I, I mean, then I'd go back to the band and I would play as if that guy were playing in our band and it would change it, it would change the way that our drummers played, you know, and everybody else in the band too. So uh, it's just, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't even remember the names of, of some of these people, but so, so for me, it wasn't necessarily an influence of another band or anything like that. It was like isolated musicians. Now in a tune like Franklin's Tower, you can hear how Phil takes the influence of, say, a drummer and applies it to his playing. You know, it's such a simple tune and he really holds back from how he typically opens things up yet he's got such a cool way of playing around with the rhythms, really syncopating them differently each time. One of the best things about the Grateful Dead was that, like Phil, they all had their own unique individual sounds, but they also knew how to play well together. Now, some bands are like a basketball team that's full of superstars that can't get the rhythm going because each player is leaning too far playing their own way. But the Dead really knew how to pass things around and Phil led the way by knowing when to step aside to help the collective get into a state of flow. Basically what's happening is we're trying to tap into that eternal, that eternal music that's always playing in the cosmos out there somewhere. And we just, we just uh, the best thing we can do, uh, or best thing I can do as a musician, is to uh, lose myself, is to forget about myself and forget about that, whatever it is I'm trying to do, and just be all ears and hands. You know, there's there's no there's no ego or no no fill there at all. At the at the best moments, there's there's nobody there. There's only the music, which comes through that pipeline. And in, in, in relation to what else you're hearing from the other musicians, and then you, you just you just pass it through, you know? and uh, that's that's when the, that's when it's the best, and that's when the audience knows that it, that, that that it's it's you know that they got a good one. And it, of course, it doesn't always happen. It's, there's a little bit of a random uh, element to it. But you can, with years and years of, of experience, you can open yourself, you can learn how to open yourself to those moments and make them, and sustain them for longer. Even when Phil is at his most individualistic, for example, playing free and loose, 
especially while playing live, he still always manages to find that cohesive groove within the group. You know, this approach towards playing in a band led to what I believe is the most important thing about Phil and the Grateful Dead. It's something that right now, the world could use a whole lot more of. We were always trying to do with our music from the very beginning was to, um, was to create a community, um, uh, a, a situation where everyone was of the same mind, as it were. In other words, we were, we were trying to create a unified consciousness in the, in the place where we were playing. Well, it's almost, it almost like a communion in, in the church. And we, in fact, used to say, every place we play is church because we're trying to bring people together. Now, if you're somebody who plays in a band or wants to, it doesn't matter how much you focus on playing well, you won't create good music with others unless you put your ego aside. You know, but that does not mean you have to put your individualism aside. I mean, the dead were all such strong individuals on their own, but they found a way to mesh because they were excellent listeners. Phil does this so well, expressing his unique identity while also blending with the collective. You know, I find that he has a perfect balance of the both. Whether you want to refine your own distinctive sound or become a better team player, you'll want to work on some fundamentals of improvising. And what better way to do that than using the framework of a song? I've created a few courses in my Dissecting the Dead series that break down specific dead tunes, diving deep into Phil's, Bob's, and Jerry's parts and how they improvise over each tune. So click on this link here or in the description down below to check out more info on those and there are definitely more on the way soon. Each course has specific backing tracks minus the Jerry, Bob, and Phil parts so you can practice what you learn for each and focus on refining your sound and listening to a real band.